Yeah, I'm good. Let's go. So this statement, which I believe is true, so if it is true, why do human beings have different perceptions of what each experience is? And why do, they want, why do we have different ideas of what the truth actually means? So neuroscience actually explains that really well, but we don't have time for that at Disrupt HR. So what is the truth? My truth is the sum total of my entire experience, the state of every cell in my body, my memories, my thoughts, my feelings, my beliefs, and even my sensations. So why don't we tell the truth? I often ask people, can you imagine telling all the truth all the time at work? And the response I usually get is, that sounds like chaos. <laughs> well, the idea here is that we often withhold or distort the truth because really we're afraid we're going to hurt people's feelings. Maybe we're being um, strategic or we're trying to be appropriate. So then we make up stories in our head about what other people are thinking and feeling. And we become really good at collecting evidence to make sure we know our story is true. So what I'm going to share with you now is a couple of simple techniques that help you discover how true your story actually is. And they're called the levels of openness. So the first level of openness is that I am oblivious that there's a problem. I have no idea if there's conflict or if there's an issue. But then when I move from unaware to aware, I'll have a sensation. It might be a wiggly feeling in my tummy or perhaps the hair at the back of my neck stands up. And then I know, oh, there's actually a conflict happening. So I, that's when I have a choice. So I can choose a few things. My first choice could be that I'm going to withhold, which means I'm not, I know what's going on, but I ain't going to tell you. Not very useful, not very effective, and withholding, bottling things up inside often results in people feeling sick, getting stressed out, and not doing very well. So imagine I'm at work, and my boss finished giving this speech the other day, and he mentioned everyone on the team except for me. I'm mad. So I remember this presentation from today that I have to tell all the truth all the time, and I storm into his office, and I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him. I look at him, and, and I'm like, you're a jerk. I can't imagine that's going to go over very well with my boss. In fact, it's probably going to make things a whole lot worse. This level of openness is often called being blunt. It's not very open, and it's usually not very useful. So the next level of openness is to identify the feeling. My boss didn't mention me at in that speech. How do I feel about that? This is also called behavioral modification. Um, marriage therapists love to use this in counseling sessions. So instead of saying, calling my boss a jerk, I might say, towards you I feel dislike. That's going to be a heck of a lot better than calling my boss a jerk and likely will provoke him to say, well, why do you feel disliked towards me? So then, I first identified my feeling. What's the behavior that triggered that feeling to happen? So then I go, well, you didn't mention me in that speech, but you mentioned everyone else. So towards you, I feel dislike because, well, you didn't recognize my work. And that gives my boss an opportunity to tell me why he excluded me. So he looks at me and he goes, well, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. I was so nervous. I am terrible at public speaking, and I clean forgot. I really didn't mean to. Oh, I say, OK. So I leave that conversation, but then I'm still thinking, no, this isn't very good for me. The other day, he didn't say good morning to me, and he's been excluding me in that strategic planning session every Friday. I'm, I'm really not doing very well. I've got to dig a little deeper. What's the story I have in my head about what my boss actually feels about me? So then I could say to my boss, OK, I imagine you feel I'm incompetent. And my boss goes, what? No, I didn't say good morning to you the other day because I got a call from the daycare. My kid fell off the swing set. I was racing out of the office. And then I haven't been including you in that strategic planning session because it happens on Fridays when the whole team can meet, and that's when you can't meet. Oh, I say, oh. So maybe there's something else going on. Maybe I often have this feeling that people think I'm incompetent. Maybe if I dig a little deeper, I have this fear within myself that I actually feel incompetent. So maybe I could say that to my boss. That's going to help me clear up the story and find out if it's true. And then maybe I could pause and go, hmm, I wonder if there's a pattern here. Do I often have this feeling of feeling incompetent? Maybe it's worth checking out when I first had that feeling and why I might still be holding on to it now. So I'm not suggesting that these kind of conversations is, are easy and they take a lot of courage. So I like to use the first truth first, which is just, I'm really nervous about having this conversation. And then it might be useful to be clear about my intention. What's the purpose of this conversation? So I might say, I'm super afraid you're going to feel bad, but I really just want to work through this problem with you. And then you always want to check out if now's a good time to have the conversation. 
So I'm not advocating for all of you to go around telling everybody you meet all of the thoughts and all of the feelings you have all the time, because seriously, that would be total chaos. But if you're laying in bed at night, mulling over that conversation you had, wondering if you should say something, that's the indicator that it's time to go and tell some truth. Thanks very much. <laughs>